Hi everyone, today I want to walk you through the process of ordering a bespoke corset, specifically a custom overbust from Dark Garden. So some of you may remember last summer I had a number of courses on loan from Dark Garden, where I reviewed two of their overbust and two of their underbust courses from their signature line, and then I sent them back. But over the years it's become clear that the majority of overbust corsets simply don't fit me. I consider myself to have a long torso and a low waist, and most overbust corsets uh, sold by off-the-rack companies don't rise up high enough in the bust, and some are too long from the waist to the lap, and pretty much all of them are not made to accommodate a full bust, and I am not even all that large on top. I looked through the available options on their website and in their brochure, and Autumn herself recommended the Aziza overbust for me, which is a sweetheart overbust designed for fuller busts, and this could be made with adjustable shoulder straps. So their measuring guide was sent over to me, and oh my god, I'm not wearing a corset, what a revelation, my body looks completely normal. So anyways, I'm also wearing a well-supportive bra that's not like padded, uh, so it doesn't add inches to my bust line. I'm wearing a well-fitted shirt that doesn't add too much bulk when I measure over it, although when I did my real measurements for this commission, I uh, just went without a shirt, <laughs> just so I could measure next to my skin. And I'm also wearing soft yoga pants here so I can easily, you know, pull it aside a little bit to take the lower hip measurements uh, when it comes to that. Anyway, they directed a ribbon to be tied around my waist, and because I'm 15 pounds heavier than my last measuring tutorial five years ago, my apparent smallest waist is actually one to two inches higher than my true skeletal waist is right now. And so the ribbon had a tendency to slide up or roll around, and I didn't want this arrow to reflect on my vertical measurements, so I was a little bit of a rebel here, and I used a belt just very slightly snug. It will act similarly to the waist tape of a corset, and it will basically anchor it in place. So I took all of my measurements in reference to the bottom bottom edge of that belt. So this is a list of measurements you need to take, starting with the waist to waist over the shoulder. So starting at the marker on your waist, whether it's the belt or the ribbon or whatever, uh, take the measuring tape vertically over your shoulder, down your back, to your marker again at the back of the waist. So I'm looking at the measurement in the mirror here. Uh, you can also sort of mark it by feel with your fingernail and then uh, take the measuring tape out of place and then look at it that way. Then comes the bust circumference, which is around the largest part of your bust with your bra on. So make sure the tape is not slouching or angled too much around the back. It should be parallel with your waist and also the floor. And when I'm taking this measurement, I also try not to have my thumb underneath there because that could make your bust measure half an inch larger than it really is. And then around the rib cage, this is your underbust measurement. So I measured directly along the bottom edge of my bra band. I also took the measurements with a full exhale and a full inhale. My exhale measurement is about 30 inches, I believe, and my circumference with a full breath is about 32 and a half inches, I think. So with a comfortable inhalation, I measured around 31 inches, so that's what I wrote down. I also mentioned to them that I have a tendency to squish upwards in corsets, so you know, don't be surprised if I actually need 32 inches instead. Next comes the natural waist. So I moved my belt up very slightly to get my natural waist measurement here. Don't suck in your belly or don't push it out, uh, you know, because you're probably not going to be sucking in the whole time that you have the corset on either. So just make sure that uh, measurement is also parallel to the floor. Next is hips three inches down from the waist, and this was apparently not in the diagram, but you measure three inches straight down from your waistline, and then I pivoted the tape at that spot and measured the circumference of the hips parallel with the waist. And this is just about where my iliac crest naturally sits. And again, I'm checking in the mirror to make sure that it's parallel along the back. And next is the hip circumference five inches down from the waist. So once again, measure five inches down from your waistline, pivot the tape at that spot, and then take the circumference all the way around. In my demonstration here, I'm probably even riding a little bit high with the measuring tape in the back, which is why having a mirror or even having somebody help you take your measurements can be very helpful. And now for the vertical measurements. So from the waist to the ribs, you measure from your underbust or your underwire of your bra down to the waistline, which is the bottom of the belt for me, once again. So this shows how long of a waist I have naturally because it's typically around five and a half or six inches. Next is the waist to bust, which is apparently also not in the illustration. 
So you measure from the fullest part of your bust directly down to the waistline. Again, remember that you should be wearing a supportive bra for this if you're full busted. I asked Autumn if I should follow over the contour of the underside of the breast and she said no, just go straight down. So that's why you see the measuring tape is pulled taut and not riding next to my body all the way down. The next measurement is waist to top side front. When they say the side front, this is what I tend to refer to as the princess line or the princess seam in my other videos. This measurement will tell them how high you want the top edge of the corset to be over the swell of the bust. So it's more your preference as opposed to strictly your body measurements. If you want a dummy bust, then measure a little bit lower. And if you want full coverage, then measure a little bit higher. I'm using my shirt as a reference here, but you can do what you prefer. The next measurement is waist to underarm, and this is taken at the side seam. Make sure you're looking at the mirror for this and try not to bend over as this will affect the arm length. You don't have to go right up into the depths of your armpit, but rather just choose the height at the side where you'd like the corset to stop. Too high or too long and it will dig into your armpits and too low or too short, you might cut some spillover and not enough support around the sides. So try to take this measurement with your spine neutral and not bending over to one side and try to take it with your arm down as much as possible. Next, the waist to top edge at the center front will tell them how high you want the neckline to be at the busk. So measure lower if you want a plunge or measure higher if you want more coverage over your cleavage. I'm using my shirt as a reference again, but of course you can choose whatever height you are more comfortable with. The last measurement is waist to bottom front. This should be long enough to cover any lower tummy pooch if you have any. If it's too long, it will poke into your pubic bone, or it might even prevent you from sitting down comfortably. And if it's too short, then it might not hold your tummy properly. Find a happy medium around your hip flexor that still allows you to sit down comfortably but covers everything you want to. When I received the first mock-up, here are the photos of me when I'm first wearing it. So this was a long distance fitting. I was directed to try and take the photos head on and not too angled, and to fill the screen as much as possible with just the corset, so full body shots are not necessary. I was asked to measure the width of the gap in the back of the corset at the top, waist, hips, and bottom edge. And as you can see, I definitely squished up and I needed several inches more space at the top. I also answered the questionnaire and emailed it in. So one, do you like where the neckline sits? Yes, no change is necessary. Two, do you like where the back of the corset comes to? And does it create a flattering line near your shoulder blades? And I mentioned that it's hitting my shoulder blades right at the bottom edge. So depending on how I move my arms, my blades actually come to rest on top of the back edge. So um, I also have a broad and fleshy back. So I said that if you think it needs to come up a little bit higher to prevent muffin top, then you know I'm okay with the back coming up a little bit higher. I also noticed that the straps meet at the back of the corset uh, the straps feel a little bit too wide on me, but I understood that this is probably because the gap at the top of the corset was so wide. But if I forced the back of the corset to be laced tighter, then the straps were brought closer together and it was more comfortable for my mobility, but obviously it caused some flesh spillover at the top and the sides. Three, do your breasts feel appropriately supported? I said, yes, it's fine. Uh, four, is the bottom line of the corset where you'd like it to be? Be sure to sit down with your mock-up on and make sure it's comfortable. I said that was fine as well. Uh, five, they asked me how much of a gap in the back that I would like my corset to have. And I said, uh, standard two inches is fine. Six, have you ever thought what you'd be wearing with the corset? And can you see what will work well with? And I said I would probably wear a skirt underneath. So as the corset fits now, the bottom edge was flush around my hips. Um, I asked, you know, if, if maybe one inch of ease at the hips would be appropriate so that uh, I have a little bit of space to have a waistband underneath there if I wanted to wear the corset over top of a skirt. And seven, it said, please tell us anything else that you feel would be relevant. So uh, because this was a long distance fitting, I measured around the arm side. And uh, I also said that uh, my shoulders slope slightly uh, because I have well-developed trap muscles. After evaluating this, Autumn said that she would rather do a second mock-up fitting before going on to the final corset. Fortunately, we would both be in New York at the end of March, so we met up so that she could fit me in person, which was a whole lot easier because she could adjust the shoulder straps appropriately and poke and prod at me. 
She could also visualize my squishability and understand those slight asymmetries and idiosyncrasies about my body, like my funky left hip and the fact that my left breast is half a cup larger than my right. This made the mock-up twist slightly on my body. Even though it felt completely centered, it obviously didn't look like it. So Autumn unlaced and relaced the mock-up until it looked right and then marked the modifications right onto the mock-up. And so shortly after, my final corset was finished and sent to me. Okay, and here is the final unboxing, which is actually the reboxing and then re-unboxing because I did try to record the original unboxing and then I only realized afterwards that there was an error with my video camera. So I don't think I'm going to be able to recreate the excitement since I've already seen it, <laughs> but I will try my best for your sake. So as you can see, it's already cut open. Uh, you can see here, on the box it says Lucy Bichon and Rancher, Love Dark Garden. Black box. Postcard. Wearing instructions. Tissue paper. And here's the final corset. So as you can see, I got this beautiful gold floral brocade. And this is the Aziza Overbust with the shoulder straps here. It's long enough for me, which I'm so excited about. The back comes up quite high, so it hides all of that um, you know, muffin top and squish happening that I usually get in the back there. Matching gold ribbon laces. Full busted, so I'm not spilling out of it. And as you can see here, detachable uh, boned modesty panel here. It all builds up to this, <laughs> which is the most exciting part. So this is the first time that I'm trying this on and I am a little bit <laughs> overwhelmed by how well it fits. It feels like a second skin. So this is a size 24. Um, I've almost got it closed all the way right from the get-go because uh, Dark Garden has a different idea of breaking in a corset. They say that uh, you don't have to wear it at a two introduction. I can wear it as tightly as I'm comfortable with. So um, I probably could close this in the back if I wanted to. It did come with a modesty panel. So this is the matching modesty panel that came with it. But right now it is over 30 degrees outside Celsius, over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so I'm letting my back breathe a little bit while I try this on for the first time and it is gorgeous I there's no back fat and that's usually my problem area in in most overbus corsets and some over uh, and some underbus corsets for that matter um, I usually get muffin top and there's just none there's there's no squidge around the, the armpit area I'm not falling out I can even like bend over forwards and there is no risk of me uh, falling out at all there's enough space in the front for me that I, I'm not being squashed down. <laughs> so um, it's amazing, it really is. And these straps here, um, they're adjustable. So they have three uh, grommets on each side. So I can move them down if I want it tighter or move them up if I need a little bit more room. Um, I can sort of wear them off the shoulder like this as well. Although um, the, the way that the grommets are aligned on the straps helps prevent them from constantly falling down on your shoulders, which I really appreciate. And I'm just, I'm amazed by the back. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm awestruck and I'm speechless at how there's no back fat back there, even though I am, uh, you know, a little bit higher than weight than I would normally like to be. Uh, you can see how the hips here, they look rather narrow on me. Uh, I don't have that large of a hip spring naturally. Most of you guys know that already. And when I wear courses, I have a tendency to squish upwards. And so when I tried on the mock-ups, you know, the, the Autumn realized this and uh, made more space in the top for me. And, you know, didn't have to worry too much about um, coming down too far in the, the lower tummy area because I don't really have any pooch down there. 
I can sit down really comfortably. I can, you know, I can drop right down to the floor if I need to pick something up. Uh, I almost have more mobility in this corset compared to some other underbust corsets just because it's made to, to fit me and it gives me the room that I need at the top and it's cut high enough at the bottom. Um, I, I'm extremely pleased. I'm sort of geeking out right now, um, especially for an overbust corsets where, as you guys know, I very rarely review overbust corsets or even buy them because they simply, like, not a lot of them are made to fit me or, you know, made to fit my body type. And um, so I'm, I'm extremely pleased that now I have, this is the second custom overbust corset that I own. And, um, you know, now I have something that I can go out and, and feel comfortable in. I can wear this to a wedding if I want to, or I can dress it down if I really wanted to. I can go to a rent fair. I can, I can use this in a lot of um, more casual places, actually, than I can wear my Sparkle Run Overbust because it's such a huge plunge and everything. Um, but now I have variety, yay! And it fits me properly, yay! So yes, look out for the review of this corset, which should be coming up shortly on my channel. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough, this process of uh, ordering a bespoke corset or a custom corset, uh, taking the measurements, going through the mock-up process, all of that. Different corset makers might go through different parts of the process differently. So uh, you know, it's not going to be exactly the same in this situation as for any and all corset makers. But if you have any questions about uh, the dark garden process specifically, or uh, the bespoke process in general, my uh, my experiences with other makers, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to get back to you and answer any of your questions. And I will see you all for the next video.